welcome to Cheshire Socialites. Um, we're continuing with our coffee morning series and we've got most probably one of the most controversial brides on Married at First Sight with us today uh, due to really um, swapping husbands and being allowed to continue on the programme. So welcome Jessica Power, we're thrilled to welcome you here today. Well, that was definitely an opening. I'm, I'm loving being here. I'm excited for these questions. They seem um, they seem like they're going to be action packed. Well, they are, but you are in safe hands. We love you lots here. Uh, we know there's a lot of controversy going around, but um, there's there's never a, a, an unkind word said at this end. So we'll start with. I'd just love to know who the real you is. We see you on the TV, and we've seen this program, but we don't know you. So who are you? How would you describe yourself? You know what? I'm just, you know what? I am just so much more calm these days. I am, I'm, I just became an auntie for, very, for, like, for the very first time. I'm a partner. Oh. I am just like somebody who is just navigating life. I'm just a normal girl, but I've just become so much more humbled from this crazy experience of this married at first sight monster that it ended oh. up with me. So, yeah, I mean, look, there's there's so many shades of Jess. There's so many shades of Jess, but I'm very happy to say that none of those are that girl that everyone's just watched because um, she no. was not very good that one. Well, you know, I think in your defence, I think you can get really swept along in these things. And I think the, the next question was about that, really, in that, you know, you, you most probably didn't know what you what to expect when you went on that program and most probably didn't think in a million years it would work out the way it did anyway and no, you, know, you went on for real reasons didn't you you went on to find love didn't you yeah like look definitely I was I was very young when I went on the show I, I just turned 27 during filming um so I was the youngest on there. I sort of just went on there with a bit of flair and fun. I didn't have any expectations. Like, obviously I was hopeful that I would find somebody, but how many, you know, reality TV shows bring out these amazing love stories. So, I mean, I wasn't naive in any way, but I just, I definitely didn't expect to stumble across Dan and I definitely didn't expect to develop the feelings I developed. And it's so funny because I'm, I'm now I'm getting to watch it back. I sit there going, I was, I was just trying to say to the public, like, why, like, but, but I love him more, but I want to be with him. So what's the problem? And watching it back now, it's just, you know, how it plays out on screen is, I guess it's just not the right way to go about things. But it was so difficult because I wasn't in love with Mick, nor did I have any emotional connection to him. But with Dan, I actually had that. So I was trying to justify that to people that I guess hadn't found that in their partners either. So they couldn't understand it. No. And I think, you know, you can't help how you feel, but I wonder um if this program correct me if I'm wrong is it is it staged are you provoked is it edited to make it look more scandalous no it's not it's it's not we're not scripted it's not staged I mean look my personality is so massive that I don't need the producers didn't even need to tell me you know maybe we should talk about this Jess because I was already on it um but but it is highly edited so you know if you take out somebody, if you cut out everybody's good qualities and consecutively put all their poor qualities, in, you know, one after another, they're going to look a certain way. For example, at the start of the show, everybody liked me because I was the likable person. I wasn't the villain. I didn't have that storyline. The second that the storyline of the villain came along, I was just, you know, every nice bit got cut out. Every nasty bit that um, Mick ever said to me was cut out as well to make him look victimised. So... There is that editing, but going into a reality show, you, you're aware of this, surely. Surely you don't go in blindly to these things. <laughs> well, you would hope so. I mean, you know, you, you can't take on the full force of this, but obviously you would have, if you've got any intelligence, which I know you have, you would know that. So, um, yeah, I think I think really that's, that's it's going to change you no matter what. Um, if it's a good story or a bad story, that kind of experience is going to change you. And this mm. is what you're trying to say to me now, isn't it? That you have changed. But how have you changed and how have you done it? Is it just learning from mistakes? See, this is what um, I was so happy to say that I got out of Married at First Sight. I didn't get the, you know, the fairy tale ending, but I did get to learn about myself. So, 
you know, once you're, once you actually have all of your poor qualities put on a TV screen for the nation to see, and you also get to watch yourself back, because you don't often get to do that. You don't often get to see how you reacted in the situation. I got to actually do that. And then I also got, you know, unbiased opinions of people going, you know what, that's just wrong, Jess, rather than my friends saying, oh, I know you feel bad, babe, but don't worry. So I was actually forced to look at the qualities in myself that weren't pleasing and and sit there and not go, why am I single? But why would anybody love you when you don't love yourself, Jess? So and that's a very good point, isn't it? It's a very, yeah. very good point. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't somebody that loved themselves. So I wasn't, how was I going to find someone that could love me? So I've just spent, you know, the last two years really just focusing on myself and, and learning and growing. And yeah, I still make mistakes. I think everybody does, but you know, I've just learned to be a lot more kinder and empathetic and aware of people's emotions because I just yeah. didn't give two minutes on that show. No, I, well, it <sighs> came across okay. like that. It, yeah it did um and obviously this is where you've got your divide now you're a bit mm. like marmite aren't you you don't love you or hate yeah. you <laughs> yeah like everyone's like oh do i like it do i not i'll have another nibble but, <laughs> but um, um anyway. yeah and i think that comes with maybe lack of confidence and self-esteem at that point maybe is that why you didn't love yourself Look, I have a very, very rough um, family upbringing. Um, you know, I had abusive partners in the past. I'd had my ex-partner only not long, not long before the show, um, probably two years before the show commit suicide on the phone to me. Um, so I just, I think I just had a very poor relationship, um, you know, ideas of what was a good relationship. You know, I, my, my parents were divorced growing up, not saying that's anything to do with how but how I behave but I feel like children um you know sort of have relationships in the future to how they uh, they view their parents and relationships yeah. around what they perceive as healthy um you know may not be actually the healthiest so it could be that I mean but also I just had people around me that would always build me up and would never point out my wrongs mm. so I was never mm. sort of held accountable for my actions, I've never sort of, no one ever said, Jess, like, hold up a second, like, this is wrong. It was sort of brushed to the side, which. Yeah, and that's that's not being kind and that, you know, when that happens, people should try and maybe be a bit more honest. And but I, I know, think, not be scared of me. <laughs> it's a real difficult one, though, isn't it? Because they don't want to offend you, but in the same breath, they can most probably see these mistakes. So yeah. I would say talking to you on that then, that the show's maybe done you a massive favour. Oh, definitely. Mm. Do you know what? A lot of people come off these shows and I, I arguably got probably the worst edit in Australian reality TV history ever. <laughs> I was hated. My publicist said to me, Jessica, you need to understand that you are Australia's most hated woman right now and your face is known to everyone. And I couldn't get it in through my head, you know, and that's as much as I could sit there and blame producers and, and edits and stuff. I'm very, I'm glad. I'm glad that I got that edit and I'm glad that, you know, I was forced to face who I really am, which wasn't nice because I could still be here 29 years old, almost turning 30 and be that same girl. Yeah. How how did it make you feel when she said that to you, that you are the most hated woman in Australia, which I think is very extreme, but how did that make you feel? Do you know what? Jess back then was, she just took this whole thing for a big ride and just thought it was hilarious. I, I, I honestly didn't realise the um, weight these shows have to some people. You know, they, they really invest their lives in it. And... Um, I kind of just laughed. I just laughed and was like, oh, yeah, whatever, until it was, you know, I would be out shopping and, and never have I ever had anyone be rude to me in public ever. But I couldn't, I still to this day can't, you know, go to the shops or go out to lunch or go and do something just normal and not have someone approach me for a photo or, a, you know, a lot of people still run up screaming at me. <laughs> and that's a bit, and that can be at the time when you're hearing you're the most hated woman in Australia that's scary to me because I'm like, I think, oh my God, are they going to hurt me? Like, are they like, <laughs> I don't know. But it's I mean, mostly just online tweets that. Yeah, and we can all brush these things off, but behind closed doors, it, it possibly could hurt you. But I know you've yeah. had a lot of trolling and bullying online and I want to talk about that because obviously it's just not on. It's not, it's not what you do. So how have you 
how have you gone around trying to deal with all that? Because it's been quite a lot, hasn't it, over the last few years? Yeah, I've always really, I've always really um, gotten a lot of bad sort of, you know, inboxes. But I, you know what, I just sat there and said, these people, um, you know, they don't define me. And I went into the, sh I went into the show saying to myself that my, the opinions of others isn't going to matter to me. The only opinions that will matter to me are my family, my friends. And I really stuck to that. And, you know, it was a real test of my character because it, it hurts sometimes, especially getting messages from people saying, you know, if I had to date you, no wonder your ex hung himself. If I had to date you, I'd hang myself too. And um, mostly like mostly attacks on my family hurt me, but it just makes me scared for when I have children or just for, you know, families that are having a rough time or kids that are bullied at school or, or have a poor home life. This is why people hurt themselves. And they just think, oh, it's just the internet. It, you know, it doesn't matter. But these, these words sometimes have a lot of weight and it, it, it doesn't get to me. I have a really thick skin and I laugh most of it off, but I just think what if, you know, or, you know, some young boy or some young girl got this sort of a message and, and you know, hurt themselves. So uh, yeah, it, it's sad. It, it's really nasty. And it just baffles me that people can wake up in the morning and decide that's what they want to spend their day doing. Absolutely. It baffles me. Do that in the morning after their coffee. <laughs> but it, it it's well it, they're cowards because they're doing it behind the screen they wouldn't most probably do half of that to your face you know that's what my um my, my brother said to me he goes just half these people that say these things to you probably have been the people coming up and lining up to see you at events yeah so don't don't let it you know get to you so it's yeah, just exactly. so yeah. just going back to your personal sort of journey what for, for people listening because i want people to be inspired because you have come a long way so what have you done personally to on this personal journey to to I know that you've obviously seen and looked back at the program and seen where you've gone wrong but what have you actually done to make yourself or change yourself into this better person that you say you are I had to really strip back all of my layers you know all of my superficial layers all of my um, you know, like confidence in myself. Um, I was, I'm very, I'm very self um, absorbed. I was very self absorbed. And I really had to strip that back and just go, who's Jess? And I went and seeked help. And you know what? I'm a massive ad advocate for mental health. I'm a massive advocate for anybody to put their hand up and say, I need some help to understand or I need some help to cope through this. And I was seeing a psychologist for about a year. And, you know, for the first six months of those psych, psych interviews, I just cried to her. I didn't actually even say anything. And then it was, you know, the after um, that, she, that I got to actually learn and, and get to the root of the actual problem. And I just took time to be me and, and, and not time to seek validation from people because that's what I was always doing, you know, the way I would dress, the way I would act, the way I would speak or, or, or um, carry myself was for, you know, validation from the from males or yeah. validation from my peers. And I just sort of sat there and went, is this really what life is about? Like trying to seek validation from everyone or do I just want to be good for me? It's tiring, isn't it? When you when you oh, actually it's so out loud. It is so tiring, especially being in the public eye. That's why I said from day one to my publicist, I won't, I'm not going to be this groomed media person. I'm going to be Jess because I'm relatable, I'm me people don't like it that's okay but a lot of people do and it just shows that we're just I'm a real person as well I'm not just this puppet on a tv show that you can just you know toss around absolutely not no and that nobody owns you regardless of of who you are what you are what you've done um yeah. but my I think my my thing on this is they shouldn't be following you they shouldn't be seeing your journey on social media they shouldn't be following you if they if if it really is that much of a problem to them they should just go away that's my biggest thing is is that half the people that follow that, that write these things follow me but then not only that my main concern is that half the women that write these nasty things to me have children in their profile pictures and I say to them I hope to god that your daughter never goes on a television show, never makes the wrong mistakes. You know, can you imagine how my family feel? They're not exactly like praising me, um, but you know, they would never speak to somebody else like that because of their of how they were on a show. And it's yeah. just, just, I don't know. Trolls have a mind of their own. I think they're just another species of people. 
Yeah, they are. We'll never get exactly we need them. We're not those people. But that was my next question, actually. Has it affected people around you, particularly your family and your friends? Has, has this affected them in any way? Um, yeah, so the first week of my wedding, so my, my little sister was one of my bridesmaids and she, she, her and I five years apart, we're like thicker thieves, best friend, she knows me in and out, seeing all my boyfriends. And she says, uh, she whispers to my auntie, she, um, he's not her type or she's not going to like him or something. And if out of anybody, she'd know that. And it was made to, to appear that Mick heard it and was offended, which he hadn't. And she just got absolutely trolled, uh, fat shamed. Eliza's always had problems with her body and I've always tried to build her up confidently. And it's to the point where I had my baby sister on the phone to me crying saying, please just make it stop. And, and I, for the one time in my life, I just couldn't help her. And that, helped, that made me feel so low because I was helpless to help my sister. And then they attacked my brother. And then there's allegations coming up out about my brother. So even before I got to enjoy this hype of the, of the show airing, but the first three weeks were with me just trying to protect my family and me saying, I will completely shut everything down with you if you don't protect my family. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, then I've got my protective side of the family who would get online and, and, and attack the trolls and stuff. And I just try to explain to them, nothing you say is going to matter. You're not going to win. They just want your attention. Don't give it to them. I just block and delete. But everything just gets so fine now. Bob on. You know, you don't, you do not, it's so hard, but you do not ever, you know, start to say to them, go back at them and respond because this is what they're waiting for. Yeah, they've got it. They always have a they always have a response no matter what. And then even if their response is so idiotic and doesn't make any sense or to the relevant argument at the start of the conversation, they'll still go. So I don't even give it my time because I have so much more going on in my life that I'd rather put my energy into. Absolutely. And yeah, they won't win for that reason. Um, yeah. Are you doing anything work-wise or for the cause of, of mental health? Uh, so my wedding dress is actually uh, being donated to a charity we have here in Australia. It's um, We had a young girl, she was a teenager, she passed away a few years ago, just online bullying. And we have a camp here, uh, since COVID set in, we've obviously had to put it back. But we have a camp here, which um, is open to children from age 14 to 18. And um, it just basically, you know, teaches them about themselves, if they're, you know, if, if, if they're seeking, you know, help or just to bring them out of those poor environments I do so that's where my um wedding dress is getting donated to to raise money for that camp um I do work with the Smith Foundation here in Australia which is for children brought up in drug and alcohol abuse homes um because I was brought up um in a poor home with my mother with substance abuse um, in my younger years so that's very close to my heart and then obviously my partner passing away with mental health um I've done countless charity work with um, men's mental health I don't I, I won't put my name behind just one um, no. charity I'll put my name behind all of it but you know I, and even just my platform I'm a big voice for young women's body image because I feel like young girls these days they get on the Instagram and they write on my my pictures my sexy pictures or whatever and highly edited ones oh my god you're so perfect I wish I could look like you and and I'll take the time to inbox and say honey like you are so beautiful and not no like this 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 whole internet thing is not real you know the perfect lighting is not real the perfect uh the filter is not real angles like it doesn't I don't look like that in the morning so yeah having this platform just really been great to be able to have a voice but yeah you know that um, for me, that's to, um, sorry, we've sorry we've got a techno there I was talking over you sorry um yeah, and I think that when it's used the correct way, like you're doing, it's just amazing that you're helping all these people, but also private messaging people. I know you're only a normal person like everyone else, but they'd most probably be quite surprised to hear that you've got the time to do that. So, you know, mm. this is the other side that we're seeing, not, not just the side where you're on that programme, which is what we were trying to get across to everybody today, that, you know, don't always believe everything you hear and everything you see. 
Yeah, they, they will. And it took, we've just finished filming our um, reunion here that's just aired in January. Um, and and it took that two and a half years for that reunion to come, to, to come and fall into my lap for the Australian public to go, actually, no, she has grown. She has matured. So I would forever have been stuck in that place of that girl in 2019 if I didn't have that retribution. And it's just, yeah. it's because people believe what they see on TV, like don't even believe the news half the time. Half the time yeah. is just, it's just rubbish. <laughs> it so. really is. Yeah, um, I limit myself to news anyway. Um, it can just brainwash you into <laughs> into being depressed. Um, but yeah, um, I think yeah, working on that though. I mean, I'd love to talk to you further about doing something with us um, about mental health over in the UK. So if that's an online event. Or if you're ever coming over here, we'd love to team up with you and do something with this because it's quite close to my heart. Would that be something you'd be interested in? No, I definitely would be. I, I have heard about your high um, uh, reality TV star suicide rates over there as well, which is... Yes, yes. Really, uh, so, yeah, no, I'd, definitely, I'd love to put my name behind anything that can help people with... Oh, you know, well, anything. that would be wonderful. So you heard that here first, guys. So we'll... We'll look at doing something with you. Um, so we'll talk to you about that again. Um, yeah. We've got to go back to the program because that's what people want to hear. I'm sorry. <laughs> they want the goss. They want the goss. <laughs> I know. Um, I suppose it's just really who is the real Mick? You know what? Who, like you say, everything's edited in what they say. In that, is he? Is he just that person that we saw? And is he lovely? And are you friends? I mean. Hmm. Look, Mick, <laughs> Mick, mm, mm. Uh, no, Mick is lovely. Mick is, this is, you know, everyone, everyone was always like, why were they matched? Even he and I were like, why were we matched? But we do have the same humour and that was it. But, he, he, you know, he is a nice guy, but but when Mick, you know, wants to be, he, he could be quite nasty. And as everybody did see at the at his homestay, that big blow up between us and I say to my producer, I can't do this on, on camera, I can't be fake on camera because we'd already had an argument prior to where Mick had called my family very, very bad, bad names. Um, his his best man had said, so we used to sleeping together. And Mick's like, nah, and I'm about as toey as a Roman sandal. I'm this close to going to see a, an escort. And I've just gone, oh. And so what? there was a lot, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things, you know, that Mick would do off, off camera, especially, like, you know, the commitment ceremonies then where you see him blow up at me, I would, I would for days and, and even walking into those say, Hannah, are we okay? Is there anything we need to talk about? Because there's no cameras around at this time. Not, not, we're sweet, we're good, we're, we're fine, we are 100% fine. And I get on the couch and I just get an absolute third degree and I would just sit there half time saying, what? So I don't, uh, yeah, Mick, Mick and I, we made up, we have made up since, but he did a lot of like manipulation as well to sort of, um, make me look a lot poorer which I thought was just horrible it's um, not it's not nice and you know that's must probably done so people would feel sorry for him and they did yeah well look you know even even like Jules she's an amazing woman but she a lot of the things that she said to me were, were horrible to the point where the experts had to stand up and say you need to stop was cut out because it would make me look like the victim and her look like you know the nasty one and that's not what they wanted they wanted me to be the nasty victim yeah so we're coming back to this editing again and you just really can't believe everything how it's set out to us um in any shape or form it has been the most explosive program though this one hasn't it it, it, it really has this season has been through the roof on on you know fallings out and and that brings me to um can you tell us who you most liked uh, person is and your most disliked person on the program and, and why yeah my most liked person on the program would have to be oh you know what it would be a toss-up between and I'm gonna get hate for this I think <laughs> Mike's awesome and everyone always and now I'm getting this weird um uh this weird like questions from people saying did you and Mike have a hookup was there anything sexual between you and Mike it definitely looked it on camera Never once have I ever gotten that vibe from him. He and I fought like brother and sister, but he, Mike is just an interesting character. He's very interesting and, and diverse. Um, and I obviously really like Heidi. She was beautiful. Um, and Mel, I love Mel. But yeah, oh, my most 
my most disliked character person is Cyrell. I can't stand her. And I know, and you know what? I, I find it very difficult to harbor such anger towards somebody. And I thought it had all been let go. And then it just came out in the reunion we filmed here in Australia. She threw a whole glass of wine on me, like just very violent, abrasive, aggressive. And at the reunion, we said, let's just let it lie, leave it. We won't talk about one another anymore. Since this is aired in the UK, well, I'm just getting media stories left, right and centre, but just still going on. And I just think, what is your problem? Because <laughs> it wasn't the Nick thing. She didn't care about Nick. So it's she's just she just loves to attack me, and I see Cyrell as a, as the type of girl that, you know, she's the advocate for you know the 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 um, kids in school that were bullied and picked on, but then she would if the if the popular girl was getting picked on that day, she would go sucked in. You deserve it. She's not an advocate for every single woman. She's an advocate for who Cyrell wants to be an advocate for, which yeah, is the advocate well of well it is. Yeah, yeah, and, and I yeah. and I just find it just condescending and poor that she can just you know tarnish my name constantly in the headlines and then try to say that she's for women mm -hmm. I totally get where you're coming from on that yes mm -hmm. um so we'll talk about Dan now because we have to yeah, <laughs> I was waiting for it now um yeah so obviously there's a massive attraction with you two from the start um I'm more into knowing what happened and are you friends now? I mean, I know he's in a new relationship. You're in your new relationship. But what actually happened? Just put the story straight on where it went wrong. Because obviously you did commit to each other on the programme. Um, yeah. And that's all we knew from then on. So what what happened between you? So um, so the night that you guys all seen um, the, the Nick and my come out in the final reunion. Yeah. Um, we was we were supposed to fly home together that next morning because um, I moved to the Gold Coast with him. Um, I was supposed to go home with him. Um, wow. he, he 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 and I got went back to the hotel room and I just said, "Hun, like you sort of knew already that conversation. I'm confused. What's going on? Can we talk? Because I'm a talker." I am a talker. I'm a ma and he's and he's not. He he shuts off. So he's like, look, babe, I, I you know we're good. I just don't want to talk tonight. Can we talk tomorrow? And um, in the morning when I got up, he wasn't there, and I was like, okay. And I sort of just waited around, and um, I sent him a message, and I didn't get anything back. And I went, so I was, you know, I wasn't going to be late for my plane. So I just, I went home. I flew, I went to the airport, and I didn't see him there. You know, waiting at the gate or anything. It was very strange and. I was just thinking, well, like, we're, I've just moved here. Like, I don't know anyone. I don't have any friends here. Like, um, I'm supposed to be going home with you. I, I, and I just, I called my auntie who I hadn't spoken to in, like, years, I think, two years or something. And I said, I'm really sorry, Annie Beck, but this has happened. And can I please come and just stay with you for a little while in Brisbane, which is about an hour and a half from Gold Coast Airport, which I had to catch a taxi. <laughs> hadn't heard from Dan still. I ended up staying, actually living with her for, like, a year and a half. <laughs> But oh, um, then, wow. <laughs> yeah, I know because we really because I didn't have a mum, so she was she helped, we, we we kindled over that. But so she, um, so Dan rang me three days later after he'd been on the boat on Aussie Day, Australia Day that we have here. It's a holiday um, with girls and all the things and that. And I seen all of it and and had in contact with me, contacted me three days later and um, basically says, can we chat? And my auntie's like, you are not going to chat with him. He is an absolute, my auntie hated him. She was done. And I, and I was so in love and I was so naive. And because my past relationships were so poor that I thought this guy was just the guy for me and everything. And I also, I think it was the fact that I'd moved states. I'd left my friends. I left my family. I'd done what I'd done on TV. I didn't want to, I wanted it to work so bad because I just didn't want everyone to be like sucked in. Anyway, we got back together. We, we were together for the duration of the airing here. And then um, we broke up on live TV. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. And then I found I became really close friends with Tamara. And I found out that Dan actually had planned the breakup. Don't know why to this day. Haven't asked him. We, we went through our slinging matches of hating each other in media. And we've now, after two and a half years, actually gone, you know what? We, this is what happened. We did it. Yeah, it wasn't right, but 
it was something that we'll forever remember. And, you know, you're, you're, you've got good qualities as a friend and you've got good qualities as a friend. So let's just let it lie. And he messages me here and there just to check on me and to say he's proud of how far I've come. And um, I just check on him as well. Cause I know that he's been getting some nasty death threats about his son and, Oh my not, goodness me. Yeah, yeah. So, but we're good. Tamara and I are really good friends. Like we're, we're, we talk every day, basically. Wow. She's, um, yeah, that was, that came together through my brother. So right. that was nice. Um, but yeah. How, then, how did yeah. you, um, how did you break up? Who broke up with who? So we, so on live TV, they bring, um, basically, it's like a little, it's a little uh, segment that happens after the reunion. So basically, Dan and I had already filmed this reunion. He knew it was coming. We'd stayed together for the three, four months of it coming out. He knew what type of hate I was getting. He knew what was what was coming up. We do this live cross on Channel 9 here in Australia. And um, they show the scene of me and Nick again. And and Dan just gets this look on his face. And I'm, and I'm, and Five minutes prior to this actually happening, I'd cooked him dinner. He said he loved me, couldn't wait to spend the rest of his life with me. So everything was fine and dandy in the world. And he just turned in, into this person that didn't, he acted like he didn't know it was going to happen because obviously the public um, are seeing, like they see it only then as well. So they would go, oh, oh he's finally seen it. Oh, look, this is happening. But really we'd already filmed it. He knew it was happening. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there with this, you can get it, you can look at it on YouTube and I'm just staring at him with this look on my, like, I've got no expression. I'm in absolute shock. And he is just, just playing this victim of, oh, I feel like I've just been, you know, played and all these things. I'm just like, oh, what is going on? My God. And the, second, <laughs> yeah, the, second yeah. the, the second that they ended, because the TV, the TV host wanted me to try and save my relationship on national television. I said, I will not do this for your ratings, for your TV show. And I'll talk no. to my partner off, off camera. And I just ripped the earpiece out and we just screamed at each other. And I was like, how could you do that to me? You've basically just assassinated me on TV. Like you've made me the, 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 the bad yeah. person that everyone thinks I am. And you know what kind of hate I'm getting, babe. Anyway, we broke up that night. Um, we both we both broke up, and then it wasn't just the Australian public saying you're a bitch for cheating. It was sucked in, ha ha ha. You got broken up with, and then the uh, influx of messages from girls of screenshots between you know, indiscretions with them and Dan while we were together, and oh god, it was a lot for it was a lot for a 27 year old girl who thought she was in love and just moved her whole life. I was, you know. That's what I was about to say. It's a lot to take on that, isn't it? Um, a lot yeah. saw you as very extreme, you know, saying you loved him in that short space of time and moving down there. But you go with your heart and you go with what you feel is what I would, I would always say anyway. Um, but many saw you as very extreme. But obviously, you know, you have to make decisions, especially when you're so far apart. Exactly right. You know, and and. I always say to people, like, if you tell your partner you loved them in the first week, if you tell your partner you loved them in a year, who makes the rule that, you know, there's a timeline on what when you feel that, that connection? And Dan and I, and Dan admits this in media interviews as well, we had an instant connection. It was yeah. unprecedented. It was, it was very apparent and it was real. Yeah. What I think. But well, I seems- saw it. Yeah, I I definitely saw it. So moving on to to Nick, what what was all that about? Um- all right, so the Nick <laughs> situation, and I'm and I've cleared this up so many times. It doesn't. This story never gets traction, so I always get asked still. And Nick will back this if you, if anyone speaks to him. So the night, so everybody sees me, Martha, Nick, Mick bloody hell um and Samuel all having that big argument down in, in Martha's um hotel and anyway so that so what they made it look like on tv was that there was a few days of filming in between the dinner party and that fight when realistically we filmed the dinner party directly the next day and um my producer said to me look you know, Nick's I've seen a bit rattled up. He, um, you and Nick have got really good friendship. Why don't you just call him out and have a chat with him, see if he's all right? And I, had, at this time, I'd been talking to Dan. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll go, I'll go. I was like, why? Anyway, so I went out. I said, Nick, uh, can we have a chat? And um, we sat down on the couch and he's like, what's going on? And I said, how are things between you and Cyril? And he's like, oh, yeah, well, how are things between you and um, Mick? 
I said, well, it's pretty clear how things between Mick and I are. They're pretty bad. But, you know, yesterday was really horrible. So this is what I'm saying at the start of our conversation where the editing comes into place. Yeah. Um, I said, yesterday was really horrible, you know, um, like Sarah was just completely off the handle. Um, I think, you know, you're a really cool guy. I, I really hope that you're not letting it get, get, get down to you. Um, so not letting you get it down, get you down. And, um, you know, I, know, I just know that you can probably just find so much better. And then he starts laughing and I'm like, what are you laughing at? And he's like, oh, oh I've just never been hit on like this. So I'm like, I'm not hitting on you, idiot. I'm just letting you know that like along the way, I've, I've obviously developed feelings for you. I think you're an awesome guy, but I'm not hitting on you. And when we, then when we, that scene Ed did, I remember him just like turning around to me and like putting like, go like he put his tongue, he poked his tongue out and put his finger up at me. Like as that, that's how our relationship was. It was that banter and neither of us ever seen what was coming. The night they sh showed it at the um, reunion, seven times Nick said she didn't hit on me. Seven times he had to say, like it didn't happen until our executive producer came out and said, Nick, I don't give a F how long we have to stay here for. And it's just three o'clock in the morning by like by this time. You're going to say she hit on you because in that edit, it looks like she hit on you. So oh and I and he looked at me and I looked at him and I just sort of went, eh, you know, whatever, just do it so we can freaking go home. Not knowing what like how bad everyone was going to take it because it was like if I was going for Nick, like I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how that just got played out. Even I, my face, that was pure shock for me. I was like, what? <laughs> like I was watching it going, is this for real? Because I remember telling Dan that, converse, that I had had that conversation with Nick, but it was never like, oh, babe, just so you know, I've had this conversation with Nick. It was me just talking about Cyril, I mean, really. And so, I just, yeah, that was the one time that I was like, that editing is massive. Um, wow, that definitely caught me. <laughs> well, I think if you're intelligent, I think looking oh. at it in it, as a viewer, I think you something wasn't quite right for me. It just didn't seem to, it didn't flow at all. Why yeah, would you be hitting on him? Yeah, <laughs> there's no lead up. There was no lead up no. of flirtation. There was no, you know, if I was going to go for Nick, I wouldn't just halfway through a dinner party go, you know what? <laughs> I'm sick. <laughs> I'm just going to go and see if Nick's interested. Um, and also they made it look like I had, um, you know, been flirting with Dan before I went and did that with Nick when I'd only just sat down with Dan and had started chatting to him, like, like you yeah. know, how was your wedding, yeah. rah, rah. So yeah. um, that's, but you know what? I'm not ever going to sit there and blame the TV show for like, oh, that's a poor yeah. edit. You know what? Good on them because they made a bloody good TV show. And yeah. I had the, the best yeah. line, the TV line in, you know, on the silver platter. And I was like, here, I have this storyline because this is what I want to do. And they probably made millions off of it. Oh, <laughs> and I made millions. Yeah, <laughs> millions. Oh, my God. It's like amazing. Um, so just moving on really to finish off it's it's really yeah. what are you doing now what I know you do a lot of influencing but as a job are you are you working have you got a business yeah so um I earn I I, I earn more money off of my Instagram than I've ever earned in my life um but I am studying my dual qualification in specialized skin treatments and beauty because I love that I love skin and I want to open up my own salon here on the Gold Coast um, and I'm currently working on my own, bringing out my own range of, um, like, yeah, I can't really, oh, yeah, it's, I could say accessories because you don't really know exactly what it is, yeah. but um, that, that should be launching soon. I'm just getting everything together and I've got heaps of things coming up. I have a big um, collaboration with an Australian designer soon and um, looking at just, yeah, lots of little things, but okay. I love my Instagram influencing. I love being able to talk to people every day on the internet, but it's not something that I, I'm very well aware that this media hum, you know, as mine hasn't settled in three years, but it may one day and I need to set up, you know, the, the building blocks for a, uh, a comfortable life for myself. And of course, yeah, of so, course. Yeah. Um, and you have a new man, don't you, in your life? I do. His name's Philip. He's Philip. upstairs. Actually, I've told him to go upstairs before because he was down here talking and I was like, get up um, you know, he, you know what, Philip, Philip and I knew each other before the show. And that was the, probably the hardest thing coming off the show was my love life, trying to find someone that wanted to be with Jess and not just power or somebody that could deal with the, the craziness of this, you know, dating a reality 
star and I don't call myself a star I think it's silly but um and he's just he's just so easygoing he just flows like water but we are the complete polar opposites but exactly the same person (laughs) it's insane and he's just yeah he's just great it's just nice it's the first time I felt nice and comfortable and secure and happy since Dan so I'm so pleased for you and and where do you where do you see yourselves in the next five years say well we've already had a discussion like I'm 30 this year he's a year younger than me and we don't want to get into relationships with people where you know a year down the track you find out you don't want kids or it's not you you know in your five-year plan and so I'm what my I've told him as well I said this will probably scare you off but my two-year plan is kids um I'm financially secure I've done I've traveled everywhere I want to travel to obviously I'm always um you know be open to business opportunities and things like that but a family and is that is ultimately what I want and if you can't give it to me sweetheart then there's the door (laughs) but he's on the same page as well which is good (laughs) so now I'm just trying to baby trap him no I'm just joking and does he want a family yeah he does yeah yeah, so he, he and I are very much on the same page, but we're so happy with just getting to know each other and learning how, about it. So how long have you actually been together then? We've been together properly for um, just a little over two and a half months now. But he is best friends with my brother and has been for many, many years. Okay. So I've really known him and I don't know, I never really looked at him like that. And I remember one day he goes, Jess, let's go out for dinner. And I was like, yeah, sweet, you know, like, let's go for dinner. And he's like, no, 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 like I've asked Reese if I could take you for dinner. And I'm like, oh, that's what those messages meant when that was you. Oh, okay, yep. I obviously haven't been flirted with in a long time. <laughs> oh, but you know what they say, if you're friends to start with, it's usually going to work very, very well. Your best friends and, and your lovers and everything like that, it will work. Yeah, and, and it's, I think that's exactly right because he's seen all of – the shades of Jess, you know, he's not learning anything new. He knows who I am. He knows that the, the show is not me and he knows my 24 personalities already. And he's seen me with partners as well. So he knows how cuckoo I can get sometimes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think that's most probably why it will work. And yeah. um, we just want to thank you so much for today for being so open and honest and letting us into your world. And it's been an absolute pleasure, Jessica. Um, and we hope to see more of you with Cheshire Socialites. No worries. Thanks for having me. And I'm very oh, looking forward to um, helping out with anything to do with your mental health. Plans. I will be in touch about that for sure. But it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much again. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.